Let's review how we learned about numbers. This is probably how it happened. First, we learned about one, two, and three, etc., all the natural numbers, and then we learned about zero, and then negative one, negative two, etc. They are negative integers, and all of them are known as integers. And then we learned about fractions, both positive and negative, such as two thirds, negative one seventh, etc. And integers and fractions are both rational numbers. And we also learned about irrational numbers, like the square root of five and pi. And rational numbers, as well as irrational numbers, are all known as real numbers. We have been working with real numbers for a long time now. But now we're going to introduce a new type of number, the imaginary number. Together, both real numbers and imaginary numbers belong to the even bigger category of numbers, the complex numbers. But in order to do that, we need to first define the imaginary unit. For real numbers, the unit number is 1. For imaginary numbers, the unit number i is defined as the square root of negative 1. In other words, i squared equals to negative 1. And with the definition of the imaginary unit, complex numbers have the standard form of a plus bi. Both a and b are real numbers. a is the real part of the complex number, and b times i is the imaginary part. Real numbers are complex numbers with imaginary part of 0. Imaginary numbers are also complex numbers with imaginary part non-zero. And if the imaginary number does not have a real part, in other words, a is zero, then it is known as a pure imaginary number. Let's look at some examples of complex numbers. First, we have the square root of negative four. Before, we were not able to evaluate it because we couldn't find the real root for negative 4. We would call this undefined. But now, since we have already defined the imaginary unit, therefore, the square root of negative 4 equals to the square root of 4 multiplied by negative 1, which is the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of negative 1. And since the square root of 4 is 2, and according to the definition of the imaginary unit, square root of negative 1 is i. Therefore, this is 2i or 0 plus 2i in the standard form of complex numbers. So this is known as a pure imaginary number because the real part a is 0. Then we have a real number, negative 6. But since real numbers are also complex numbers, it can also be written in the standard form to be negative 6 plus 0i. Once again, this is a real number because its real part a is negative 6, but the coefficient for its imaginary part b equals to 0. Another example, negative 5 plus the square root of negative 7. We can do the same thing for the square root of negative 7. Therefore, in standard form, this is negative 5 plus square root of 7i. Here, this is an imaginary number with real part of negative 5. The coefficient for the imaginary part is the square root of 7. So square root of 7 times i is the imaginary part of this number. If two complex numbers, a plus bi and c plus di, equal to each other, this could only mean one thing, that a equals to c and b equals to d. In other words, both real parts are equal and imaginary parts are equal as well. For example, if there are two complex numbers, negative 6 plus 2u plus 1i and negative v minus 5i, and they are equal to each other. We need to solve the real numbers u and v. So if they equal to each other, that could only mean that the real parts equal to each other, 
in this case negative 6 equals to negative v from here we can solve v to be 6 and their imaginary parts also equal to each other so 2u plus 1 equals to negative 5 from here we can solve u to be negative 3 and therefore they both equals to negative 6 minus 5i the addition and subtraction of two complex numbers are quite straightforward. For addition, for example, if we want to add a plus bi and c plus di, then all we need to do is to add the real parts together to be the new real part. So in this case, a plus c is the new real part. And then add the imaginary parts together to get the new imaginary part. So in this case, bi plus di equals to b plus di. That's the new imaginary part. Similar thing for subtraction. So a plus bi minus c plus di equals to new real part a minus c, and then the new imaginary part bi minus di, which is b minus di. For example, to find the sum and difference of these two complex numbers, 5 plus 4i and negative 2 plus 4i, to find the sum, we add them together add real parts together and imaginary parts together so we got the sum is 3 plus 8i and then 5 plus 4i minus negative 2 plus 4i again do the subtraction of the real parts and the subtraction of the imaginary parts and then we got the difference here is 7 plus 0i which is simply real number 7 the multiplication of two complex numbers. If we want to find a plus bi multiplied by c plus di, we're going to first use the FOIL method that we learned already to multiply it out. And notice the last term here, which is bd times i squared. By definition, i squared equals to negative 1. Therefore, this last term simply equals to negative bd. Therefore, if we group the real terms together and the imaginary term together and write this product in the standard form of complex number, we got AC minus BD, that's the real part, and then plus AD plus BCI, that's the imaginary part. For example, to find the product of the two complex numbers, 5 plus 4i and negative 2 plus 4i, we multiply them, use the FOIL method to multiply it out and then notice here after the calculation the last term here is a 16 times i squared again by definition i squared equals to negative 1 therefore 16 i squared equals to negative 16 which is the real number therefore we combine the real parts together and the imaginary parts together and now we have negative 26 plus 12i We have just introduced the addition, subtraction, and multiplication of complex numbers. Now it seems to be time for quotient. But before we do that, we need to first introduce complex conjugates. Two complex numbers, a plus bi and a minus bi, are a pair of complex conjugates. As you can see, they have the same real part, a, and they have negative imaginary parts, bi and negative bi. So why are they special? It is because their product, a plus bi times a minus bi equals to a squared minus bi squared, which is a squared minus b squared i squared. And again, by definition, i squared equals to negative 1. Therefore, this equals to a squared plus b squared, which is always a real number. Here are some examples of conjugate pairs. For a complex number, 2 plus 4i, its conjugate number is 2 minus 4i. For complex number, negative square root of 3 minus 1 over 7i, its conjugate number again has the same real part, negative square root of 3, and then plus 1 over 7i.
for a pure imaginary number 16i its conjugate number is simply negative 16i and for a real number 5 its conjugate number is still 5 because again conjugate pairs have the same real part now we are ready to introduce the quotient of two complex numbers for example a plus bi over c plus di how do we write this into the standard form for a complex number we're going to multiply this by a coefficient this coefficient is c minus di over c minus di as you can see it has the same numerator and denominator therefore it has the value of one therefore we are not changing the original value of our quotient and the reason why we choose the numerator and the denominator of this coefficient to be c minus di this is because c minus di is the conjugate number for c plus di therefore when we carry out the calculation the denominator becomes c plus di multiplied by c minus di and according to what we just talked about this equals to c squared plus d squared which is a real number and we use the multiplication of complex number that we learned just now to multiply out the numerator and then separate them rearrange we got the standard form for this quotient this is the new real part and this is the new imaginary part let's look at this example write 5 plus 4i over negative 2 plus 4i in standard form so we start with this quotient multiply it with a coefficient with the same numerator and denominator and there's the same numerator and denominator being negative 2 minus 4i the co complex conjugate number of negative 2 plus 4i therefore the denominator simply becomes negative 2 squared plus 4 squared which is 20 and that's a real number and then we used the multiplication of complex number to calculate the numerator and then separate them and get the quotient in standard form 3 over 10 is the real part and negative 7 over 5i is the imaginary part just in case you are wondering why in the middle of studying polynomial functions we are suddenly studying complex numbers the reason is because now we can find the complex zeros for polynomial functions we can find complex solutions for polynomial equations for example solve for x from this quadratic equation we're going to use the quadratic formula substitute in a b and c and then we got 2 plus or minus square root of negative 16 over negative 2 before we would simply stop here and say this is undefined but now since we know how to evaluate the square root of negative 16 that is square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1 which is by definition the imaginary unit i therefore this becomes 2 plus or minus 4i over negative 2 and that is negative 1 plus or minus 2i these are the two complex solutions to this quadratic equation